steampunk nail art tutorial that is very, very chrome by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone! In today's video I'm going to be showing you a steampunk themed nail art. So in this design it is going to be mostly gears, but I also wanted to add a little bit of lace and some chrome and um, like I said, I do have gears. I've got these little 3D gears that um, some of them I got from nail places like um, Born Pretty Store or Banggood has them, I know too. But I'm also using some of my favorite ones are actually from the findings department of Michaels. So they're actually for making jewelry and little embellishments and things like that. So those are not from there. They're a little bit less delicate, but I actually kind of like that for the steampunk realm because it looks a little bit more... Um, basic I suppose you could say. I don't know. I like those. Those ones are my favorite. So I'm going to be mostly using those ones on my nails today. So I hope you guys like this fun steampunk theme design and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So begin by painting your thumb, middle, and pinkies with black, your index nail with gold glitter, and your um, ring nail with like a bronze color. And this is all gel polish. So now here's a little lamp that I'm going to be showing you that I used in this design or that I used to cure everything here. And it's actually, it's a USB um, curing lamp and I'll put links to it in the description box below but it's called a rainbow mini and it's got little fold out almost like a little kickstand that they both fold out and they do kind of click in place so they don't fold out on their own so if you have you have to kind of grab them in the right way to get them out but they do come out and then they stand and then it just plugs into the back of it and then that plugs in like I said to a USB port so either um, if you like a wall adapter or I just plugged it into my laptop which is so cool for traveling and actually even though it's for like a single nail I could easily probably cure a hand in it without a problem I mean I did so yeah it worked out really well so I'm going to begin by applying a matte gel top coat and it was really only necessary over my middle nail but for whatever reason I applied it on my index nail as well and then a glossy no wipe um, gel top coat to my pinky ring and thumbnails. So then on my middle nail, that one that has matte on it, it's that one actually does need a matte top coat. The only reason it needs matte is so that the paint's going to apply easier and stick better. That's the main reason for that. Um, but I'm just going to start by painting a circle in the center of the nail with white gel polish or not white gel polish with white acrylic paint. This is going to be for the face of the clock and then I'm going to start outlining it with a, just a gold circle going around it with some gold paint. This gold paint I have is like a softer kind of gold it's not like a yellow gold i think it's called antique gold maybe i don't know but it's just it's a really like a pretty softer softer color so i'm just gonna go around that this is to make the frame of the clock so there's that first circle and then i want to be a little bit more decorative a little bit more victorian so this is where that little bit of like a lace element comes into it's not really lace but i did like a almost a mask kind of quality to it so i'm gonna add two swirls on each side just like that it's very slight swirls with one little line coming down between them just like so and then add a row of dots that go and fill in the rest of the area around the frame of the clock just like that so they kind of are they're bigger towards the top and then they get smaller when they get reached the middle and then they're bigger towards the bottom and get smaller when they get closer to the middle going back up and then if you need to add a second coat to any of your gold go ahead and do that now if you wanted to you could do this with say a black gel paint and then burnish in some gold chrome powder on top of it if you were really wanting to use all that chrome powder and everything i just decided this gold paint would suffice and i went with this instead i thought it'd be it's a little bit easier a little bit quicker so then i'm going to take and i'm going to be adding a second coat of white to the center of my clock face just like that if your gold frame ended up being a little bit imperfect this is a really good time to fix it up because you can easily smooth out the lines from the inside with that white paint. Just go ahead and if it's necessary, add a second coat. Yours might not be, it might not need it. But then with black, I'm going to be going ahead and adding all of the numbers on my clock face. So I, I decided to go with Roman numerals to kind of keep with that almost Victorian type essence to it. So it's XII at the top and then it's IX and then it's three, three lines for the three and then it's VI at the bottom just like that and first I went through and just added all those and then I went across and I added the horizontal lines that cap the ends of them just like that now that part is optional if you didn't want to do that you would not have had to do those last few lines but I kind of like the way it looks I think it makes it look a little bit more finished so I wanted to add those and then I'm going to be taking and I'm going to be just doing a very slight outline around the white and gold border on the clock now the reason that i'm only doing it there is because around the outside of it there's already that black nail so adding a black outline is completely unnecessary that being said if any of your dots or your swirls or your lines on the outside got a little bit wonky it's very easy to fix them with just a little bit more of that black paint because no one's ever going to be able to tell it's just black so i just went ahead and i kind of defined a couple of my swirls with a little bit of that black paint like i mentioned just to make sure that they looked a little bit more 
a little more swirly and less blobbish. And then I'm going to be adding just a polka dot in the very center of the clock. Then with some builder gel, I'm going to be adding two little metal pieces out of one of those gear sets that I mentioned in the beginning. Um, so I'm going to be adding two of them for the two hands of the clock. So I'm just going to place down some builder gel, like I said, because that's going to hold them the best and make sure that they don't just pop off in a day. And then set down those two little metal pieces, and there's that. On the ring nail that has that no wipe top coat on it, I'm going to be burnishing in some silver chrome powder about halfway down the nail, kind of fading it down over that bronze color. It looks so cool, and it's hard to even describe. It's, it's very subtle, this silver to bronze fade because some of the bronze does show through because it's that chrome powder but then after that's on there I'm just going to take it I'm going to be outlining the nail like I said it is better to use a matte top coat if you're going to be doing outlining like this but um it's okay just doing it over that no wipe the shiny it does work it's not it's not quite as easy it doesn't paint on as smoothly and it might not last as long but it does definitely work and since there's not really all that much painting it's not necessary to bother with the matte top coat so then I'm going to take and I'm going to be just painting some black gears on there as well. I painted three of them. So I started out with a circle, added a little, almost a wheel type shape in the center, and then add those little pegs around the outside of the gear. And then the next two I did were a little smaller. So that first one I did was a bit bigger. So next I'm going to make, it's going to have a bigger or a thicker black circle around it. And then once again, those little pegs on the outside. And then the last one I'm going to do is going to have a thinner line with smaller pegs. So there's that thinner line. And then I'm just going to go through, like I mentioned, and add the rest of those pegs. Now, when you're doing this, if you find that you're getting, um, your lines are too thick and you're having problems, make sure that you, especially when I was painting these gears, I found I wasn't washing my brush enough. Maybe it was just how I was feeling this morning. I don't know, but you may want to go ahead and make sure that you really are washing your brush as much as you need to and rinsing it out whenever, almost like between gears and fairly frequently to make sure that it is lasting and doing its job properly. So then on my index nail, I'm going to be doing three gears going down from the cuticle. So the first one's going to be one of those bigger ones. And then I added two smaller ones. So they get progressively smaller down the nail. And this is again, attaching them with builder gel. Now in the beginning of the video, like I said, I applied some matte top coat to this nail. This is completely unnecessary. In fact, this one doesn't even need any top coat between the color and the art. So I don't know why I did that particularly, but I did, so who knows. So then I'm also going to be putting a couple caviar beads in there. So I put one in the center of the larger gear and then four of them just between the other gears just to kind of fill in and prevent any big gaps. After that's cured, that one's done. And then on my thumb, I'm going to begin, once again, that has that no wipe on there. And I'm going to be burnishing in some silver chrome powder, really making sure I rub that in so that it's got a nice good mirror quality to it. I want to make, I want to make sure that it looks very, very smooth. And these chrome powders actually are so nice for steampunk because it definitely gives it that metal world kind of quality. So then I'm going to be going through and doing the same thing, outlining with a thin black nine line. If you're wondering why I'm outlining all the nails that have the chrome powder on that, that is just my preference. I do that with a gradient too. I don't know if you guys are familiar with my videos. You may have noticed that almost every time I have a gradient on my nails, they also are outlined. It is a personal preference. I just think that it looks a little cleaner when you do that. But if you don't like the outlines, you can go ahead and skip them. And then I'm going to be attaching one of those single gears up near my cuticle. Once again, with builder gel, that stuff really does the best job at attaching any kind of embellishments to a nail. So I went with the, the gear and then with a caviar bead in the center of it and then cure it. And then on my pinky, I'm going to be repeating the exact same process from the thumb, except this time I'm going to be doing it with gold. And all the gears that I've used have been a different color. There's been three of those larger ones and there's... Like I said, different colors on each one. There's been kind of like a gold one on my thumb, a bronze one on my index nail, and then a silver one on my pinky. So just kind of, you know, keep it a little bit different, sort of switch them up a little bit. And then I'm going to be applying a layer of gel top coat over everything that is on here. And when I'm doing this, I am being very meticulous about covering up all of the gears and everything. This is extremely important because otherwise you're kind of also smoothing out their sharp edges mostly on the index nails where I think I'm going to be having a problem with it because I they are a little bit scratchy somewhat now it's not something where I feel like I'm going to do anybody damage to themselves with them but definitely apply some gel top coat over it to smooth out any of those rough edges so I hope you guys like this I am completely in love with these these are so cool I love steampunk so I was just so excited to do this and please share any recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram I would love to see them and I will see you in my next video bye